Hey YouTube, Brandon Ascari here with another great episode of Ascari Digital's Content Creator Academy where you can watch me wear dark colored clothes to make it look like I'm not as heavy as I really am. This week's episode is going to be talking about audio recording. Tips and tricks for how to get the cleanest and best sound recording that you possibly can, whether you're on a budget or you're not. But first, let's take a look at the intro. Everybody, welcome back. If you haven't already, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you and all your friends and family can be the first one to see our episodes when they air Monday and Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you haven't already. Share the video with all your friends, drop a comment down below, and let's start talking about the tips and tricks to recording the cleanest possible sound that you can. So the first and most important thing about recording clean sound is actually going to be your mic placement. It doesn't matter so much what mic you're using, but actually where you put the microphone. So let's say, for instance, you're using a shotgun microphone like a boom. The idea is to keep it angled up high, pointing down, about a 45 degree angle, towards the subject's mouth. So you want to keep any microphone as close as you possibly can to the subject. For instance, you see my lapel mic right over here. So what you want to do is get the microphones as close as you possibly can when you're recording a narrative scene and hiding them above or below the frame. So for instance, with a shotgun microphone, you'll have it just above frame pointing in at a 45 degree angle to the subject's mouth. The idea of this is to keep it within 12 inches to 24 inches. After that, it's so far away that the sound waves are going to travel way too far before they pick up in the microphone. So you'll get a lot of echo, reverb, all this stuff that you don't want in your sound recording. So if you're using a lapel microphone, generally speaking like this one, a lavalier, you will put under the talent shirt pretty much right here in the small area of the chest. Now, if this is a narrative scene and not an interview style like me where I have it clipped on or a news show where they have it clipped on, the way that we hide the lapel microphones is actually with a little piece of gaff tape right here. I know, super professional and you probably never saw that coming. You bet. I bet that you thought we had some fancy gizmo that magically flies up under somebody's shirt and just holds it there so there's no problems at all. But realistically, gaff tape, or you can use one of the sleeves that they have that's adhesive that you could buy online. I already have gaff tape, so I use this. So what we're going to do is make triangles out of this. Now you'll see as I'm folding this that I'm basically creating what looks like those old paper footballs that we used to fling at people in high school. If you were one of the cool kids, I certainly was not. But once we make our first triangle, you just keep repeating the process over and over again until you have a very compact and tight triangle and then you'll make a second one because we need two of these to sandwich the microphone in between so you'll make your first crease folding over to get the shape of a triangle then you will fold over in the line that follows to keep the triangle in its proper shape and form so once we have that together we now have two triangles then what you're going to do is take your lapel mic sandwich it between the two of them while leaving the tip of the lapel mic where the actual microphone portion is just a hair below the top of the triangle at its shortest height. You do not want to use it at its tall height because that won't work for this. You keep it in the middle and have it just below the tip of the shortest height of the triangle. Sandwich it together and then you'll just run that up the talent shirt stick it onto their chest underneath the clothes somewhere in the small area and that is how you would keep the lapel mic except it would be underneath the shirt on your subject the next tip i'm going to give you is actually about getting rid of some of the background noise now personally i don't know about you but i get a little cranky when i don't have air conditioning in the room that i'm in but Given a narrative film environment where we want really clean and realistic sound, we're going to have to kill the air conditioning, get rid of the heat, nothing can be turned on. Always, please don't forget, check the refrigerator. Even if it's one of those eco-friendly refrigerators that is on sometimes and it shuts itself off and it's on sometimes, always you're going to forget about it. And then in the middle of a take, you got your best performance possible. Your actors are crying their eyes out and your director's just... We got it. And they get that crazy 
photo where they're just pointing at something, even though they're never pointing at something, and everything is so perfect. But in the middle of it, when you're in post, you heard the refrigerator. And then you have to spend money in post to hire somebody to take it out, and it, it's torture. So just always remember, kill the refrigerator, kill the air conditioner, kill the heat, turn off anything that's making noise that you can. If there's a fish tank in there or something, turn it off. That way, you'll reduce the noise. If your neighbor's mowing their lawn, you might have to wait. Or wait until they get to the backyard where it's further away and hopefully you won't hear it. But you're probably going to have to wait. There's all sorts of stuff. No matter what happens, Murphy's Law says, when you go to a film location, no matter how many times you checked, something's going to go wrong. A train's going to go by, somebody's going to mow their lawn, construction's going to happen, something will happen. But we'll work around this as best as we can. What I recommend doing next is using some sort of a sound blanket. Now, you have the professional sound blankets, which look exactly like a moving blanket, just maybe a little bit thicker for 50 to 200 and something dollars. And then you have moving blankets, which are not professional sound blankets, which I am personally using right now to film these videos. I have a sound blanket to the right of me. I have a sound blanket in front of me. I have a sound blanket to the left of me, and I have a sound blanket on the floor. Now, if I could, and I was a little bit craftier, and there wasn't a ceiling fan in this room, I would have a ceiling blanket on the ceiling too. Uh, sorry, a moving blanket on the ceiling as well. I have ceiling in my mind, I don't know why. So the idea of this is to help trap the sound so it can't travel as far and allows it to have less noise coming in and less echo when I speak. So that way you can kind of trap the sound in here. It's like a budget way of trying to turn the room into uh, an inexpensive recording studio because we're not actually in a recording studio and maybe what I want to see on camera is not the inside of a recording studio. So those are some tricks to helping deaden the sound and contain it within the space. That's tips on the microphone placement. Now, with mic placement, you can use all sorts of different mics. Sometimes you will see something like the Yeti microphones where you'll want to keep that as close as possible. Same idea, just as close as you can, pointing towards the subject's mouth is the best advice I could give you. The lapel mic as close as possible. The shotgun mic within 12 to 24 inches at a 45 degree angle placed just outside the frame. When you are on a professional film set as a sound mixer, what you will do is always, always, ask the cinematographer for frame. Hold your boom mic, slowly dip it down until they say frame. That's how you know, okay, this is as far down as my boom can go. And then I recommend a couple inches above that because sometimes people get tired and it starts to, oh, you know, this boom pole was three pounds two hours ago and now it feels like 50 pounds. So always go a couple inches above where frame is, keeps you safe. Another thing you could use if you're doing voiceover work, I recommend a pop filter or a screen filter. Now that is something that you attach onto the microphone that you're recording into, and all you have to do is put that on, separate it, generally speaking, one fist away from your mouth should be the pop filter, and then one fist behind the pop filter should be your microphone. That gives you a general rule of thumb of how close the microphone should be and how much separation that you need for the windscreen to get the best recording. Now what that does is take away some of the sibilances and the pops that the voice makes. So Peter is the popping sound. And then your sibilances are the S sound. So Sally sells, she said, is your sibilances. The wind filter or the pop filter helps to eliminate those. So you'll always want to use those when you're doing voiceover work or when you're recording anything into the computer or into a mix board or something like that. Now, the last tip that I'm going to give you in this video, and this is by no means comprehensive whatsoever, just a few tips to help you get started, is to go into Adobe Premiere Pro and look at their denoise setting. You, it's a drag and drop plugin. You just drag it, drop it right onto the clip. Automatically, your noise is heavily reduced. Awesome plugin. Not perfect by any means. You'll have to adjust some things, you know, depending on the clip. Sometimes you may have to just isolate a little section of that clip and add the denoise to it because it doesn't work with the frequencies throughout the whole take. But generally speaking, it's a drop one time. Pretty good result. Not perfect, but decent. You know, we're not going into the parametric equalizer and isolating specific frequencies or anything like that. But it does help in the beginning just to throw that on there. Clean up the sound just a little bit before you go and post it somewhere. 
So that sums up the tips and tricks on audio recording for this week's episode. If you have any questions, as always, please leave a comment down below. But please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We have passed the 250 subscriber mark, which is amazing. I can't thank you enough. So with that, we're actually going to do a contest for the next month. And that contest is going to be watch as many episodes as you possibly can, share it as often as you can, like the videos, comment on them, whatever you can do. Whoever has the most activity on the content and the videos and sharing, whoever draws as much attention to the channel as possible is going to receive, drum roll please, since we're talking about audio recording, I'm going to give away a Zoom H4n Pro. This is the standard of independent filmmaking, what recorder that most indie films used. I started with it about 10 years ago when it was just a Zoom H4n, and now I want to give away the Pro version for free to the lucky winner who has done the most to help promote this channel and keep an eye on it, you know, share, subscribe, like, whatever they do. So that is my gift to whoever wins this contest. It starts today and it will go for the next 30 days. So get to work, start sharing the video, start liking, subscribing content, uh, you know, hit the notification bell, whatever you could do. And good luck. I can't wait to see who wins this. And I hope you get the most use out of it whatsoever. Start recording some projects and I hope that you'll share it with me. I don't mind giving you your feedback on anything that you record with it. So in the meantime, my name is Brandon Ascari of Ascari Digital's Content Creator Academy, where it is my goal to educate and inspire you to being the best and most successful freelancer you could be. And in the meantime, I will see ya.